this video is about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the fundamental theorem calculus says a function f is continuous if a function f is continuous on the closed interval a b and capital F is the antiderivative of f then if you want to find the definite integral from a to b this is how you calculate it. It's the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. So you do have to actually integrate it first and then plug in the bounds. Plugging in the upper bound first and then the lower bound, okay? So now we actually have a way to calculate um, the definite integral. So here, if I take this, I want to simplify this so I can apply my rules. So I am gonna square this. So three t times three t is nine t squared t times negative 1 is negative 3t and another negative 3t makes negative 6t and the negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So all I am doing is 3t minus 1 times itself and then simplifying it and you get this. Okay. Um, I don't show that but that's what I'm doing. Now I can integrate each piece so I have 9t cubed over 3 minus 6 t squared over 2 plus 1 t and now this is just the notation that I'm going to use to tell myself I have to evaluate this entire expression from 0 to 4 those are my bounds before I do that I want to clean this up so I am going to reduce this to get 3 t cubed minus 3 t squared plus t and so now I have to follow the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says to plug in my upper bound first. And then subtract whatever I get when I plug in my lower bound. So Let's see, that would be 3, 0 cubed minus 3, 0 squared plus 0. So this is just going to be a big fat 0. But I am going to end up with um, 3 times 64 is 192. 16 times 3 is 48 plus 4 minus that big fat 0. and I get 148. So this is the um, definite integral value. Now remember, definite integral value actually represents area. So really what I have found is the area underneath this function from zero to four. Now example two, it's gonna go back into the, tying it into the idea of area. So it says, find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of equations given. So you've got this equation, x equal to zero. x equal to zero is just the y-axis. So this is the equation x equal to zero. x equal to three would be a vertical line going this direction. Um, that would be the equation x equal to three. And then y equals to three is actually the x-axis. So y equal to zero. The only function I'm missing is what's going to be the top part of this um, region here, right? So let's pick some x values to plug in there. So if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 2. If I plug in 1, I'm going to get 2 plus 1 plus 2, which is 5. <coughs> if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 8 plus 2 plus 2, which is 12. And if I plug in 3, I'm going to get 18 plus 3 plus 2 which is 23. So let's see when we plug in 0 we get 2 which is down here somewhere. When we plug in 1 we get 5 which is down here somewhere. When we plug in 2 we get 12 which is there somewhere. And then when we plug in 3 we get um, 23 which is about there somewhere. So the graph is a quadratic and it does look like it's opening upward this graph here which means I'm trying to find the area of the region bounded by those three graphs which is this region here okay and so how do you calculate that 
the area would be between x value of 0 and x value of 3 of this function and then of course you have to have the dx at the end. Now this I can calculate. Um, let's just find this antiderivative. So 2x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x and again I have to evaluate it from 0 to 3. So first I have to plug in 3 so I get 2 thirds times 3 cubed plus 3 squared over 2 plus 2 times 3 minus whatever I get when I plug in 0. Now this doesn't always come out to be 0 most times it does but in this case all of these guys are zero again which means I end up with um, 2 over 3 times 27 which is 18 plus 9 over 2 which is 4.5 and oops 6 there So I get 28.5, or if I put that in a fraction, 57 over 2. Okay, so that's what um, you end up with the area for this region. Now I only have a couple more examples, so I am going to just finish the whole section in um, one video. So this one has us evaluating this. We know we cannot evaluate that with radicals. So this is actually u to the half. And we usually don't leave it as a fraction. We separate it. So u over u to the one half minus eight over u to the one half. And then we simplify those fractions so we get u to the one half because one minus a half is positive half and eight u to the negative one half du. Then we have um, the integration process. So we end up with um, u to the three halves divided by three halves, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal minus 8u to the, if I add 1, I get positive 1 half, and then divide, or I'm sorry, divide by 1 half means I multiply by the reciprocal. Um, and you don't put your plus c. You just evaluate it from 1 to 9. Why don't you put your plus c? Because if I have a plus c and I plug in 9, I'm still going to have a plus c. And then when I plug in 1, I'm still going to have the plus C. And when you're subtracting them, the C's are just going to go away anyway. So when you're doing definite integrals, you do not need to write the C's. Um, because they just go away. So let's see here. We'll get 2 thirds, 9 to the 3 halves, minus 8, 9 to the 1 half. Oh, that won't be 8. That'll actually be 16. And then minus what we get when we plug in 1. So 2 thirds times 1, and then 16 times 1 to the 1 half. So here I get the square root of 9. Let's see, the square root of 9 is 3. 3 raised to the third power is 27. 27 divided by 3 is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. Then here I will get the square root of 9, which is 3. 16 times 3 is 48. If I distribute this minus, this will be negative, and I'll have 2 thirds. And then if I distribute the negative here, I'll have positive 16. So 18 minus 48 plus 16, I get negative 14 minus 2 thirds, which is actually. Um, minus two-thirds and then we can put it in a fraction we get negative 44 over 3. Now that might have to do with the fact that maybe some of this graph goes under 
the x-axis, which is why I end up with a negative value. But all they asked me to do was evaluate the indefinite, in, I mean, I'm sorry, the definite integral. And so this is what I've calculated. Now, you know, usually when you're doing the area, um, you take the absolute value of this. If they ask you what's the area under the x-axis, area can't be negative, so you would take the absolute value of that um, number there. But let's go ahead and move on to an example four. So first thing I'm going to do is take the square root of each, the numerator and the denominator. Now the number, I can just take it out. It's just the coefficient. But the variable, I can rewrite as an exponent form. So it'd be x to the negative one half because it was in the denominator. Then when I go to actually evaluate the integral, I have to add one, so I get x to the one half, and then divide by the new power, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And I still have to evaluate it from one to four. So I end up with the square root of three times two, four to the one half, minus two, one to the one half, so I get the square root of three times the square root of two is two, or square root of four is two times two is four. The square root of one is one times two is two. So I end up with the square root of three times two, or just two square root of three. And that would be the value there.